Mm. Let's talk about this then with uh, former Labour advisor and associate editor of Labour Uncut, uh, Kevin Marr. Kevin, morning to you. What do you make of uh, what uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg had to say? Morning to you both. Um, well, I think it's, it's an admission that um, he's got a very difficult job. Um, Minister for Brexit opportunities is more often... Um, Minister for Brexit difficulties. Um, now, Brexit was always going to be tricky. It was always going to be bumpy. Whether you're a Remainer or, or a Brexiteer, um, it was always going to be. It was always going to be. I think you know a, a, a new departure. Um, and you know, probably the case for Brexit has always been oversold. Um, we've now got a situation where the Bank of England last week is predicting five quarters of economic decline for, Brit- for the British economy. Five consecutive quarters of contraction, which will bite seriously, given obviously all the other cost of living issues that we've got. Now, not all of that is about Brexit. That's important to say that. Some of it is about Brexit, um, but not all of it. But it will make it very difficult um, for Jacob Rees-Mogg and for the government to spell out the benefits of Brexit um, when um, we're seeing interest rates going up, inflation out of control, unemployment starting to rise, poverty being very, very widespread. So it's going to be very, very difficult to control the narrative that, that Brexit is actually a great opportunity and, and will lead to sunny uplands and all the rest of it. Now, no, I mean, you know, Jacob Rees-Mogg is, is quite right. I mean, I mean, on the on the vaccine rollout, being outside the European Union meant that Britain could, could um, acquire its own vaccine supplies and roll that out quicker. So fair enough. But at the same time, we've also got the worst death rate from COVID in, in, in the European Union. So, so the difficulty is that for any any kind of thing you might alight on and point to as a benefit to Brexit, there's something that comes along pretty qu- pretty quickly afterwards that causes a problem. Free movement, for example, is another good example. So, so we've ended free movement. That was the big issue, I think, that really galvanised the British public to say Im- immigration is out of control. We've got to control our borders. Free movement is used as a policy that, that effectively facilitates mass immigration. So we, we, we clamped down on free movement. Um, and we've seen, for example, in the building industry, every part of the building industry, we've seen wages rise in the last three years. So if you're in the building industry, Brexit's been good because, frankly, you've got fewer fewer um, workers from Eastern Europe that are coming in here competing for jobs. But at the same time, we've seen this massive increase in the boat people coming across the channel from France. So in the public's mind, we're not controlling the borders. We're not controlling immigration because although we may have clamped down on free movement and the movement of workers, we still have this massive problem at the beaches every single day.